Yeah, we're starting from lane four on this Monday edition of the Sportsman Zone. Caribbean athletes captured four titles as the 2023 track and field season culminated with the Wanda Diamond League finals in Eugene, Oregon at the weekend. World 200 meter champion Sharika Jackson of Jamaica was a standout securing the sprint double. Yeah, Jackson winning 10.70 seconds over 100 meters. Mari Jazetalu, how she would have loved for this to have been the World Championships. Second at 10.75. Elaine Thompson here at third at 10.79. Natasha Morrison finishing in sixth position on lifetime best 10.85 for the Jamaican. Women's 200 meters also won by Sharika Jackson, 21.57. Her winning time, Marisa Zetalu, well back at 22.10. And the Bohemian, Anthony Strawn, closing out a fine season for her with a 22.16 performance for third. Two other Caribbean winners. Men's 110 meter hurdles. This was on Sunday's final day. Hansa Parchment, a world leading 12.93, a lifetime best for the 33 year old as well, beating the world champion Grant Holloway of the USA again. Post World Championship 1306 for Holloway. Daniel Roberts, the world championship bronze medalist, third here as well at 1307. And the Grenadian Kirani James. Won his second Diamond League trophy, 44-30. His winning time beating Quincy Hall of the USA, 44-44. And Vernon Norwood, 44-61. Rasheed McDonald of Jamaica finishing fifth at 45.10 seconds. Well, Litton Levy has been dying to sit on this new beautiful set, so we invited him <laughs> just for that reason. Well, no, we invited him to have this discussion on the Wanda Diamond League finals in Eugene, Oregon, Litton. First of all, welcome to greatness. Welcome to beauty. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I came in here and stubbed my toe on the other set over there and almost broke my neck, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> the, set, the set is absolutely amazing, and it's nice seeing you guys on a curved set for the, you know, which is something that I've always advocated for, and it's actually amazing. If you haven't seen it, you should all come down here. We charge you fifty dollars to come in, and you, you can look at it. But it's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, it, re it reminds me of a couple of sets that I've been on internationally, and mm -hmm. it, it compares very well. Well, tell you what. By the way, Leighton meant fifty U.S. dollars. Yeah, fifty That's U.S. That's number one. Um, and second of all, Leighton, we, we've not invited you here to analyze the set. You are here to <laughs> analyze track and, track and field. field. Um, so Sharika Jackson, at the end of her fabulous sprint double at the Wanda Diamond League finals, said that she gives her season a 10 out of 10, Leighton Levy. Do you agree with her? 10 out of 10 in 2023 for Sharika Jackson. What say you? I give her 9.5 out of 10. Why? Because she lost the 100 at Worlds. Other than that, it's perfect except for that one blip on her resume this season. It's been a fantastic season for Sharika Jackson. When you consider th um, two times on a 21 5, 21, closing the season with 21 57, 10 65, 10 70. The only blip, the only blip was that she lost the 100 at the World Championships, which is a major blip given the fact that she was favored to win the double in, in Budapest. So I, I mean, I'm not going to dispute her 10 out of 10, but the fact is that when you look at the record itself, it's not as perfect as she would have liked it to be. Yeah. Leighton, talk to us now a bit about Sharika's time, 10.70, 21.57. Were these times that you expected her? Yeah, um, I actually thought she would have been within that range for the 100, given the length of the season and given the intensity of the season. She's been competing at a very high level all season long, 10.65s, 10.7s. That, I think her slowest time this year was at 10.8 something. Um, and of course, the comeback at, at here at the end of the season, running 10.70. In fact, in this race, she actually attained a speed that only two women have ever gone faster than, and that's Flo Joe and Elaine Thompson-Hero. 
39.6, I think, kilometers per hour. She was fabulous in the 100, and of course, finally getting that chance to beat Shakira Richardson, which is who she's lost to all season long. So I think she'll be very happy with that 1070, and you know, it's, it's, it, it again validates her, her credentials as a developing 100 meter runner. And I think we'll probably see a lot better from her from now going onwards, because I think she's finally now beginning to figure out the 100 in a way which will make her even more dangerous in the years to come. Yeah. yeah. Talk to us quickly about that rating that you, you referenced a couple of weeks ago, about 100, 200, 400 combination sprinting, and where you have her at the moment, because certainly based on what she has achieved as a short sprinter in the past year and a half, two years, um, she must be right up there. Yeah, she's ranked second, based on my math, she's actually second overall right now, behind Marita Kopp from Germany, who we, we know ran... 10, 10, well, whatever it was, I don't remember the actual numbers right now, but her, her ranking points are 3,809. Yes. Sharika's ranking points are 3,805 after that 1065 that she ran in um, a national championships. So it's 1065, 2141, and 4947 makes her active, the, the best active female combination sprinter in history, but second overall to Marita Koch. She's passed Flo Jo, she's passed Marianne Jones. She's passed um, Shawnee miller Weibo. In fact, two seasons ago, Sherika Jackson was ranked 50th in the world, I think it was. And last year, she moved up to fifth. Now she's second. And I do believe that next year, if she manages to get under that 1060, under, under 1065, she'll be the greatest of all time. But she already is because she's now the only woman to have run under 21.5 as many times as she has. So, you know, she's right up there among the greatest combination yeah. sprinters in history. Yeah, but there's some doubt about Marita Cox's um, place in history based on the German doping scandal of the yeah. 1970s and so on. Absolutely. 4760, look, it's been 30-odd years, and nobody's even come close to that. I think 40 or 13 by um, El Nassar a couple of world championships ago is the closest anybody has come since the 4799 by... The, the um, Kratoshvilova, whose name I can never pronounce properly, but I think you've got it. Yeah, Jarmila, Jarmila. So you're looking at a situation where Sharika is incredibly talented as a combination sprinter. And when she alluded to the fact that she could go back to the 400 a couple of Diamond League meets ago, when she said she could go back to the 400, consider this. When Sharika ran 49-47, she was still a 22 high sprinter. No, she can actually cruise to 22 and come home in 25 and become a 47 sprinter in the 400 meters if she gets that work in when she decides to go back to the 400. So she could actually end up being supreme in a class of one if she goes back to the 400 and does 47 anything. Yeah, let's talk about uh, a few other competitors in that women's 100 final specifically. One of them, Elaine Thompson-Hira, ending the season with 1079. And I'm not sure that many persons saw 1079 in Elaine Thompson-Hira's 2023 season, given that at the time of the Nationals, she was only at 11.06. Before the Nationals, she sounded as if she was at breaking point with all the injuries um, that she was dealing with at the time. And for her to turn this season around, Leighton, is almost magical. Listen, I want to tell you a quick story. After that race, I called a friend of mine on the phone. Who were we talking about? We weren't talking about Sherika Jackson's win. Right. We were talking about Elaine Thompson's 1079. You on social media? Yeah, but yeah, but he said he called but, a friend. Yeah, but I called a friend because <laughs> he and I have these conversations a lot. Okay. And what it was that when you consider that 1106 at the national championships, I said on the show that. If she runs that time and 11 zeros or 11 ones at the national championship, she was not going to make the team. She didn't make the team individually. But since that time, after it was announced that Shanique Osborne took over her coaching responsibilities, 11 flat, 1092, 1084, 1079. When you consider the progress that she has made, considering how truncated her background season was, it's nothing short of phenomenal. And I think the last time I was here, well, on the old set, certainly, I said her ceiling is higher than everybody else's. So if she gets back close to that ceiling, she's going to be dangerous come in the following season. So if she stays healthy, going into 2024, it's going to be something special to, to, to see because at the end of this season, considering where she came from just two months ago, yes. is remarkable. Yeah. Right. Just a quick comment on Shakira Richardson. How much should we make of her fourth place finish 
at the Diamond League finals. I wouldn't make much of it. I think when you when you set a goal and you accomplish that goal, which was winning the world title, yes. and you go back home and you're getting all the accolades, you tend to drop your intensity a little bit. And she's young and she's celebrating the moment. You know, she's having fun and she's thinking, I accomplished my goals this year. 10, 1065, she's world champion. Now she's, she's validated her authenticity as a sprinter. You kind of lose the edge a little bit. She doesn't have that hunger yet that will fire her on to years, for years to come. But for right now, I wouldn't read. 10.8 is still a very good time. And I, I don't think there's too much to worry about. She'll be fast again next year. But it matters because the Olympic title is something that they will wa all want to go for. Yes. So I think she'll be focused again to run fast again next year. Yeah, quickly. The men's 400 meters, Kirana James. And I had to um, look at this twice. This was his second diamond trophy, Kirana James. The first one came in 2011. Yeah, yeah. That was the year he won his world title as an 18-year-old. Yeah. Um, and 12 years later, he has a second diamond trophy. How much will this mean to Kirani James, though, given the year he's had? Listen, for what he's been through this year, for what he's been through for the last few years, grave disease, his coach dying in June, you know, the challenges that he's had with injuries, especially this year. He said it right after the race, that he's had to balance his emotions given that Harvey Johnson died in June, a man who is like a father to him, somebody who has guided him all the way through from college days, coming right through to this point early, well, before he died in June. You know, for him to come back and run 44-3 and, of course, win the Diamond League title has to mean the world to him because this is validation that he's still among the greatest 400-meter runners of all time. When you look at his record overall, Olympic title, world title, world medalist, and of course, two-time Diamond League champion, you know, he goes down in history as one of the greatest of all time. And this season, more than any, will validate that. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, oh, go ahead, Maya. No, go ahead. Yeah, I, will, I just wanted to say that because he has achieved so much and he started so young, it's almost as if you don't realize that at the moment he's 31 years old. Only 31. Because he seems as if, as a uh, of reference just now, um, you know, <laughs> he, in 2012, uh, 2011, in Daegu, was an 18-year-old, he won the world title. He started winning international titles from he was like 15, 16, yeah. Commonwealth Youth, and then World Youth, and uh, these titles were back in 08 and 09, yeah. and uh, that seems, you know, uh, like an eternity a world away. Yeah, yeah, because I remember the first time I saw him win at Carifta, and I'm like, who is this little skinny kid from Grenada? But he was quick. And, I mean, he still he looks... Did, he did have a 200-meter world work, 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 yeah. yeah. So you may look at him and see how long he's been doing this at the very highest level. And it speaks to the, the immense talent that he possesses. And he has, he has actually delivered on that talent year in, year out. Notwithstanding the people who have beaten him over the time. When you look at the times that have beaten him, world record 43-03, you're looking at um, LaShawn Merritt's you know, 43 sixes. Those are the times that is required to be Kirani James. And at 31, he's, um, he's gone beyond veteran stage yeah. here. He's like an old-timer old in this event. And he still manages to produce his quality events when it matters most. And the key question would be, any signs of him slowing down at 31? Well, not right now. He's 31. I mean, I think he has a few year, good years left of him. And, and the 400 has come back to the field a little bit right now because we're not seeing that many 43 runners except for Stephen Gardner. There are not that many 43 runners anymore. So the, 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 the window now is somewhere between, say, 41, 44, 1 and 44, 3. Yeah. And Kirani James is right there. Yeah, we've had this discussion late, and we had it in the build-up to the World Championships as it relates to Hansa Parchment and the 110 <laughs> hurdles. Um, I'll say it again. I had predicted Hansa Parchment to win the world title because yeah. what he has produced subsequent to the World Championships is what I expected in Budapest. It did not come, but here he is again late and showing his absolute quality. We speak about Kirani James being 31 years old. Hansa Parchment is 33 years old. Yeah. The thing with the, thing with, the, thing with the hurdles is that, I mean, we've seen it with Kingdom and other guys, mm -hmm. um, Alan Johnson and others. They've, hurdles have a way of extending their careers well into their 30s. Yes. But when you look at what Hansa Parchment has been able to do, I'm wondering whether or not his cycle was a little bit off in terms of the world championships because since the world championships he's gone faster and faster. 1296, now 1293, and he's beaten Grant Holloway twice. Now, I'm, I'm, 
I didn't check, but I th I'm almost convinced now that his record is similar to Rashid Broswell's record against Holloway because it may be that he's beaten him more than the American has beaten him as well. So, you know, as I said on the show again, to me, Hans is like a god when it comes to the hurdles because he's a massive man for those who are not familiar with him. He's like six foot five. Mm -hmm. He takes an eternity to unfurl out of the blocks because there's no hurdles. There's no really drive fields where you're diving, you're driving forward. Yeah. You come straight up because you have to get your knees up as quickly as possible. And for him to unfurl and then hit those hurdles, you know, and increase his speed through the middle of that race and close as rapidly as he does is nothing short of phenomenal. And they proved it once again on the weekend, chasing down Grant Holloway and proving that maybe his cycle may have been a little bit off in, in Budapest. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder that as well. As I said, I had suggested after the 1295 that what I saw in that race was a lot more aggression than I saw um, in Budapest, and that was part of what made the difference. Um, but it could be a number of things. It could be that the cycle was slightly off. Um, it, it could also be that Maybe the confidence wasn't quite there. Um, some would say maybe even a, a not enough races over the season. Who knows? But he is producing at a really high level. The, the track and field season is over, Leighton. Um, can you believe it? Um, and it ended in fabulous fashion. Two world records at the Diamond League finals. Um, the women's 5,000 record. The world 10,000 champion, Segai, getting that. And the pole vault, Mondo de Plantis, a season can't end and he doesn't get a world record. That would be almost criminal. This, yeah. this guy has broken the world record seven times already. He's what, 21? <laughs> 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 I remember when Sergei Bubka and Yelena Isambayeva used to break the world records quite, quite frequently. This guy is doing things that they were doing well in their 20s, late 20s. He's, he's a baby still. And he's breaking six meters 23. That's ridiculous. I remember when, when Boca did 615, I think it was. And I was like, God, can anybody go any higher than that? And here is this guy just jumping these heights like it's nothing. And of course, with Sagai, it, it's, it's stunning because it was only in June that Faith Kibiegan took seconds off of the world record, 1405 21, I think it was, or 1405 20. Mm -hmm. Sagai comes and takes five seconds off of that again. <laughs> you know, it's interesting you bring that up, right, Leighton? Because before that 5,000 on Sunday, I was having a conversation with someone who was saying that Faith Kipiegan should, should be a shoe-in for female world athlete I of the year. So. And at the time, I said to the individual, well, maybe, but if Sharika Jackson goes and breaks the 200 world record, then we would be having a different conversation. And part of why I said that... I said to the individual, the 5,000 record, um, yes, it's a massive world record, but it's, it's an event that, in my opinion, is still developing, and it's a record that could go at any time. And 10 minutes later, he comes back and goes, well, oh, yeah, um, Segai just broke the 5,000 record. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but here's the thing, though. Here's why I keep your gun for me is the, the undisputed. I agree, because here. Sharika didn't break the 200 yeah, world record. If also, she did, it would be a different conversation no, no, no. is but the point even, I'm but making. But even if Sharika broke the world record, here's the thing. It's, it's three world records that Sagai and Kip Yagan has broken this year. Yes. She's a world champion in both events, 1,500 and the 5,000. Yes. She's a Diamond League champion. Yes. How do you top that? Even, even though Sagai broke, the, broke her world record, the fact is that she did break it first. Um, so, I don't know. She's for me is the, is the, is the AOI. Yeah. We're out of time, Leighton, so I, I can't give you my argument, but there's an <laughs> argument that I could um, come up with. Um, but Sharika Jackson didn't break the World 200 record, so it's inconsequential. Yeah, Leighton Levy, for the first time on our new beautiful set. Yeah, you're not going to be seeing him after the break. No. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. <laughs>